Welcome back. Hopefully you came up with a brute force solution and you're ready, ready to take a look at it. All right, my guess is that if you really went for simplicity, you're gonna have code that looks some something like the following, right? You might not have all the details and I'm not, not so, so worried about it. Uh, but let's, ta let's take a look at, at uh, sort of a textbook solution here, and this actually is out of the textbook. Um, so what we have is, is a, a function here that takes an array and returns just the MCSS, right? So very, very simple version. Um, and we see the main structure here is actually a triple nested loop, okay? So we're gonna loop over, where does the subsequence begin? It starts at, at A, and the earliest place it could start is zero, all right? And it could go as long as, as, as long as it starts somewhere within the sequence, so as long as it's less than the length, we're okay, all right? Next is J, where does it end? Well, it can't end before it starts, so the it could be a single element sequence where it begins and ends at the same place. So J could be I, or you know it could be further, you know, sort of growing over to the to the right of I. J is probably going to be bigger than than I, right? And so on. Um, and so that that's gonna these nested loops here are going to ensure that we begin and end at every possible um, you know beginning and ending point, right? So we get all the subsequences. Now for each one we're gonna compute the sum, all right? Find its sum, so loop from i to j, all right, one at a time, going from i, ending at j, and compute a sum, so initialize at zero and keep keep looping to, to, to find a sum, and once you get a sum, check to see if it's bigger than the maximum one you've seen so far, right? So, which we initialize to zero, and if it is bigger, then store it and store where it, you know, where it, uh, where it started and where it ended, okay? Uh, and that is a very brute force solution, okay? And hopefully that's 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 intuitively correct, right, to you. All right, uh, all right so k goes through every element of the subsequence and then, and then we check it. Now the interesting part here, if we wanna analyze it, we wanna think about what is the runtime? Where is the algorithm gonna spend the most time? Which one of these lines of code is gonna execute most frequently when we run this? Find it. Okay, you, you you probably guessed, right? So it's it's the innermost loop here, right? And in fact, this statement right here is going to execute many many times, right? And your intuition about the runtime might be that's you know it's that it, that is quite a bit there. So let let's take a look at this and and analyze it, right? So how many times as a function of the length of the array, which we're going to call n, will that statement execute, right? Um, so here I'm, I've just cut out all the all the stuff we just so that we have the loop structure here in fact we don't even really need this guy uh, so so what what is it right so hmm well uh, what I want us to do is to, to think about about where it starts here so so the loop structure so question six on your quiz flipping over um, asked us to write the bounds of the nested loop so we can use them right so uh, I goes from zero and the biggest thing that can go, so this guy is n, i is less than n, so the biggest one that it can be is n minus one. j starts at i, and it keeps going on incrementing by one every time, and it's also less than n, where the biggest one is n minus one. And then k, uh, sorry, k, goes from i to j. i, i, dot, 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 j, okay? So that's my overall structure, and I want to count how many times this, you know, something that's inside this loop runs. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go on to the next slide, just so I have lots of place to, to to work here. So which statement is executed most often? This guy right here. Uh, how many times? Let's count them. Right. So I'm going to copy over. I goes from zero to n minus one. J goes from i to n minus one, and k goes from i to j. Right. And we did some of these the other the other day in class. All right, so let's take a look here. So I have i, and then I'm gonna have j, and this is a triply nested loop here. So I'm gonna have k as well. Uh, and then I'm gonna count for each one how many times that executes. All right, so let's do i. i starts at zero, okay? Now, I actually have three of these. So rather than writing zero, one, two, three, four down the left-hand column, I'm, I'm actually gonna have a few J's that go along with that. So I'm not gonna write it yet. So if I is zero, what happens to J? 
Well, j starts at i. The smallest thing that it can be is 0. All right. Um, and then within that, k can vary, right? k can vary from 0 to 0. Hmm. Well, there's only one thing it could be, right? So I'm, if you think about it, I have a, a subsequence that begins and ends at the zeroth element, so the first thing in the array, um, and there's only one, you know, there's only one, uh, that loop only runs once, okay, that innermost loop. All right, uh, so let's see, so that k, the k loop runs, then we go back out to the j loop, so now j goes, can be anything from i up to n minus one. So the next biggest thing here, as increments by one, is one. All right, so we did j plus plus j equals one. So now my k loop, is gonna run from i to j. So from i, which is still zero here, and then up to j, one. How many are there? One, two, okay, so the count is two. All right, let's see if we can see the pattern here, right? So so come over here, so j plus plus. Uh, so, now, uh, so now j is equal to two, and then k runs from i to j, so zero, one, two, or three times, and you're starting to see the pattern here. J is three, zero, one, two, three, from I to J, four times, and so on. Once you see the pattern, you don't have to go any further. Uh, let's, where are we gonna stop? What's the biggest valid value of J? Well, J goes from I up to N minus one. All right, so the biggest thing that I can have is N minus one. What does K do then? Well, it goes from I to J, from zero to N minus one zero all the way up to n minus one. How many of them are there? How many times did this line of code execute? Well, it executed n minus one plus one for the zero or n times, okay? And what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to sum over all of these things. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sum yet, but just recognize I'm gonna add up the numbers between, between one and n at some point I need to do that, okay? All of that was all when i equals zero. So this is the count of all the sub of all the runtime of this algorithm when the subsequence starts with position zero. Okay, huh? That's a whole bunch. All right. So what happens next? So these guys finished. Now we do i plus plus. I can now be equal to one. And repeat the process. Okay. What's j now? J starts at i. So this time it doesn't start at zero can't be less than i. So the sequence ends at, ends at j. So it is, so, so we have j equals one, and in which case, what could k be? Well, k goes from i to j, so only just one. There's just one thing there, okay? j keeps incrementing just like before, two, three, all the way up to n minus one, and when it's two, k could be, goes from i to j, one or two. When j is three, k goes from one to three, one, two, three, and finally, all the way up to the n, when it goes from one to n minus one, one all the way up to n minus one. And if we count up each one of them, I get two, three, all the way up to n minus one. So I have the sum of the numbers between one and n minus one. Okay, great. I hope you're writing small on your quiz because there's, there's still some more stuff coming here, okay? What I want you to do right now is pause the video and do the, the, the um, i equals two case. All right, I know you might see the pattern, you might be fine. If you see it, it's gonna be really fast, but, but you gotta keep going until you got this pattern nailed, right? See what happens for J and K and get your counts. Okay, let's see how you did here. Uh, so hopefully you, you recognize that, that J starts at I and then K is only, is, can only be the value two and there's only one thing here, so the, the count is one, this guy. And then when j is three, k goes from i to j, two of them, all the way up to n minus one. So two, three, four, all the way up to n minus one. So how many are there this time? So I have n minus one, but not the one. So I subtract one away and I have n minus two. Okay, something like that, all right? Uh, you get the idea. You can kind of see what's happened. This is the sum from one to n. This is a sum from one to n minus one. This is a sum from one to n minus two. So, etc. You don't have to write out all of them. I mean, we don't even know how many there are, except that the last one we should take a look at. What's the biggest value of i? That's right. That's why we wrote it down, right? i is less than the length n, so the biggest one is n minus one. Okay. So, what is j in this case? So j starts at i. 
as long as it's less than n, we're okay. So n minus one here. So k goes from i to j, or just n minus one, and then it's done, right? So there's just one element here. That's it, okay? So, huh. Well, this is, this is interesting, right? So let's take a look then uh, at, at what we have, um, because we, we have some summations here, right? Um, but we really, uh, huh, we have a summation. I goes from one to N of I. Summation, I goes from one, let's see, I goes from one to N minus one of I, and so on. All the way down to this guy, this is a, this is a summation of i goes from one to one of i, right? It's just one. Um, so what do each of these look like? Because we actually need to add all of these together, right? Summation i goes from one to n minus two of i. We need to add them all together. So what do, what do they look like? Well, the first one is just the standard formula. You know this by now. n times n plus one over two. This guy right here is the same formula, only with an n minus one plugged in here, and minus one plus one, and I'm actually gonna write it like that just so we can see the pattern. All right, um, I know you, you could simplify, but, but let's let's hold off for a second. Uh, the next one here, summation to n minus two, it's the same formula, but just with an n minus two plugged in, so n minus two plus one over two. And then the last one here is, and this is gonna feel weird, right, but if, if it ends at one, then it's gonna be um, it's going to be all the way down to 1 times 1 plus 1 over 2, okay? And if you want to verify, that's just 2 times 1 is 2 over 2 is, is, is just 1, right? Which we got here. All right, we want to add all of these guys up, all right? Now, interestingly, what we actually have, if we want to, if we want to think about this, is we have one thing that's very, all of these together can be written as a summation. All right, how can it be written as a summation? Let me actually um, do this up a little bit higher here. So how can it be written as a summation? Well, it's a whole bunch of things over two. It's things that are all in this form. Something times something plus one over two. Well, I have, what do I have? Well, I'm, I'm actually gonna start with the smaller ones here. So it's going one times one plus one over two. The next one would have been, now we didn't write it here, but it would have been two times two plus one over two. All right, and then three plus th three times three plus one over two, all the way up to n minus two times n minus two plus one over two, n minus one times n minus one plus one over two, and n times n plus one over two. So it's something times something plus one over two, where that something starts at the small end here, one, and goes all the way up to the end, n. Okay. So it's another it's another summation. All right. So how do we solve this guy? Again, this is a correct answer, but it's not yet closed form. We need an answer with just n in it, no more variables. Well, how do you simplify this? Well, we get a half here, right? So we, we summation, some of the properties of summations are that we can, for instance, factor out things like the one half, right? Uh, so let's do that. Let's factor that guy out and then also distribute this. I'm gonna do a couple steps here together. Uh, so the sums of the m squared plus, and the one half factored out, then I have m, that was the m squared, and this one's gonna be m equals one to n of m. Okay. All right, so how do we do that? Well, let's, let's, let's take a look here, okay? So one of these is easier than the other. This guy right here, if we think about it, that's the same formula that we had here, we just have an m instead of an i, but it's the same formula, right? We're, we're summing one, the numbers between one and n. So we have n times n plus one over two, okay? Plus, and out here we have a half, right? Well, what's the rest of it? Okay, so this one you'd actually have to look up. So, you know, if, if you search on the internet uh, or look in, in, a, in a calc book or math, another kind of math book, whatever, you can find it. So the, the, the closed form formula for this guy, and again, I don't expect you to have it memorized, you know, put it on a formula sheet and bring it to the test, you, you don't need to memorize it, is n times n plus one times two n plus one over six, okay? That's just a formula of, of the sum of the squares. It's one squared plus two squared plus three squared plus four squared plus all the way up to n squared um, has this format right here, okay? All right, 
Very good. Let's let's do a, a bunch of, of algebra, simplify this guy out. So the first thing that I want to do is factor out an n times n plus 1 out of each of them. n times n plus 1, I'll keep that 2 out there. And I'm left with here a 2n plus 1 over 6. I factored these guys out, so I just have a 1 half. But 1 half, if I want a common denominator, I can write that as 3 6 so that I can combine it. n, n plus 1 over 2. And then inside here, I'm going to have 2n plus 4 over 6, or 2, and I factor out. So let's see, maybe I'm doing too, too much at once here, but I, I don't think so. So this is, right, 2n plus 4. I just factor out the 2, 2n plus 4. Okay, great. And then if I simplify this, then all I need to do is cancel those 2s, get n times n plus 1 times n plus 2, all over 6. Okay and I have myself an answer. Looks great, okay? What is the big O of this, right? Or more precisely, what is the, the big theta of this function? All right, well, n times n times n, my leading term, most dominant term is n cubed, okay? And you're saying to yourself, well, you know what? I could have guessed that this was n cubed. It was a triply nested for loop, um, and it seems pretty straightforward. It's n cubed, great. Uh, I agree, I think you could have figured that out. I doubt you would have guessed that it was approximately 1 6th n cubed though, all right? So kind of the 1 6th, you need to do this analysis to, to, to figure it out, all right? Um, well, that's good. So MCSS can be solved in cubic time, right? And let's, and let's um, I think what I wanna do is, is stop there and we'll come back and wrap this up shortly. Uh, but I guess we'll finish up with with an interlude just for fun. So Donald Knuth uh, said that, that computer science is no more about computers than astronomy is about... Mm -hmm.